Alright, yeah, here's a video I hadn't planned on making, but uh, a recent video I made, I was using this drill bit here, and I was drilling through 3 16 brass, which isn't very thick at all, and uh, the drill grabbed, and uh, it actually snapped. Snapped the drill. I don't remember the last time I did that. Alright, let's look at that. And, uh, I wasn't thinking nothing about it. You know, I was just going to throw it in the garbage and be done with it. But, uh, one of my subscribers, uh, Alan uh, McKinney, I think it was, he says, uh, he goes, Are you going to try and save that and cut that and re, re uh, sharpen that? Yeah. And I didn't even think about it, but uh, he said uh, he had just broken one of his yesterday and was curious to see how you can uh, make that work again. I was just going to use this end here, you know, in a, in a pinch, you know. But uh, I put that in a drill and uh, this thing's actually bent. So, uh, I don't have much here, you know. It's, uh, I don't know if we'll be able to sharpen this or not, but uh, let's give it a try. What, you, what we're going to try and go for is uh, you want to uh, 118 degrees. That's your that's your average drill that you get off the shelf from Home Depot and stuff. You know, from the looks of this tip here, this this tip here, I don't know who sharpened that, but uh, that's not even close to 118. Uh, this uh, this bit here has never been sharpened, and that's what a 118 looks like. That's uh, Hardly, hardly anything taken off there at all, but anyway, that's what we're going to aim for. So, I mean, our other drills, I got a drill here. This is made for plexiglass, and that, uh, look at the point on that thing. This was never sharpened either, this is at a factory. But, uh, that's about 145 degrees there. Uh, some bits, you know, you, 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 you sharpen a 135 and everything, but like I say, we're going to go with the common size, and that's uh, 118. So, let's go over there uh, and look at the, the grinder and, uh, and the sander, and we'll show you what we're going to do. Alright, I'm over here at the grinder, and a lot of people don't even know. I, uh, I don't even use these supports here. I, I, matter of fact, I don't even use this grinder hardly, you know. I use, a, I use the, the wire wheel more than anything. But... Uh, I leave this grinder on here, this stone here, because Mike likes it. You know, he's always over here grinding something, so uh, and so it's going to stay. Apparently, this uh, this support was in the way, so we put that down there. But anyway, here are the here are the pieces to this, and this is about 40 years old. And some of them actually come with this. You see this this support here? That's got a grooved piece in there, and that's actually for sharpening drills. That's 118 degrees. If you look at it, you see this thing's like brand new. I've, I've never used it. But uh, if you got a grinder, you might even have that. You know, some of them just already have it in the in the plate. Some of the plates you can't remove. And they have that. So uh, check that, and that'll give you 118 degrees. I'll bring that over here anyway. All right, what I plan on doing, I'm gonna, I, I like using the, the sander here. You know, I, I, you know, it gives you a flatter surface and everything. And I just, I just like this machine. And uh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna use this uh, protractor or whatever they call it. Uh, so let's bring this over to the bench and uh, we'll uh, square it up. All right, I'm gonna throw you guys up on a tripod so I got uh, two hands to work with here. All right. All right. All right. I got this white thing down here so you might be able to see this a little better. But uh, like I said, we're going. This is what we're going for. 118 degrees and I got this protractor here and I'm trying to do this without the going out of focus but you see that we got it right here at 118 degrees and uh, that's actually what this is here this uh, let me do this here there we go. that's pretty close that's close enough right you see that uh, it's dead nuts on there so if you have one of these little groove things for your uh, grinder, go ahead, go have at it. But uh, I brought this out. I like it. Still, a little piece of plastic junk. 
it's, a, it's an Empire, so that's probably a Home Depot. I should get a metal one because uh, this is actually missing a thumb screw. I mean, it's it's tight enough, but uh, the little thumb screw would lock it in place. But uh, I don't I don't ever trust these uh, these protractors and stuff. It's plastic garbage they give you with the the newer stuff. Plus, it don't even it don't even have uh, 118 degrees on it. This is where a little uh, dirt biker uh, might come in handy. I say, yeah, what do I need? And they'd say, yeah, let me say uh, 118 and uh, minus uh, 90 and stuff, and say, yeah, uh, uh, try 28. So we're going to try 28 degrees there and check it on our machine here. And it's uh, it's close, it's close, but it's not there. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make that perfect. You know, because you got you got too many uh, variables here. Plastic is plastic that aluminum. You got a little arrow here that uh, is on a thing and moves. So I always uh, I always double check all my uh, precision stuff that isn't all that precise. So let me uh, let me put this where it belongs and then we'll get back to you. All right. Yeah, I measured that and uh, it's pretty pretty close. Pretty pretty uh, close on there. So. Uh, this ain't all that far off. Well, what I noticed here is, uh, I don't know if you can see on the side there, but on the side here is uh, like a little uh, little carriage to hold stuff. And I wouldn't be surprised if that was four drills. Look at that. That drill fits in there. It how like it had eyes. Because when you put this in the machine, you know, your uh, your drill bit's going to stick out like that. But if it's, over, if it, if it's back here, it's going to be pretty close to the, the sander. So uh, it's pretty pretty interesting. Never noticed that before. All right. Well, actually, what we're going to do is uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going I want to I want to make that flat. I want to make that square before I do anything. So I set that. I'm going to set this at 90, and then check it. And uh, it's pretty close. Not that on, but it's pretty close. I'm surprised. So let's go over to sander and. Uh, Look over there, see what we gotta do. All right, I got you over here at the sander, and uh, it's a pretty decent sander. This is a pretty expensive sander. This ain't something you get at Home Depot. That was pretty expensive. But anyway, this is another reason why you always check everything. You know, I always, I always carry a square with me. You know, I this uh, it's got a knob over here, and this 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 plate is uh, is tightened up as much as it can go. But if you look at it, somebody leans on that. You know, when they're doing something else, not paying attention. You know, that's. There goes your uh, your 90 degrees. So you check that. There you go. All right, we're right there. Even aside here, I always check. I don't know if you can see it over here, but I always check this before I work. You know, none of this stuff ever stays uh, precise. But another thing I wanted to show you. You know, if you don't have protractors and uh, gauges and stuff like that to, to check your angle, what you could do is uh, get some nuts, just two regular nuts, and hold them together. And let me see if you can see this. I'm going to try and come close so you can see it. But anyway, if you take a, a drill and put it right in there, let me see which way to uh, this way then uh, that's 120 degrees and that's uh, that's close enough for uh, comfort so uh, you could even uh, put a third nut in there to make sure everything is all all square and stuff and uh, there you go there's your gauge so it's uh, it's a little tip tip of the day yeah you can glue them together weld them together and you get yourself a gauge so you don't need nothing fancy yeah this is this isn't for you machinists this I'm probably doing everything wrong, but this is for the guy, the poor schlub in the garage that broke a drill and just wants to get back to work, you know. I used to work in a tool and die shop when I was uh, 17, many, 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 many years ago. And my job was uh, sharpening drills and uh, separating bolts, and I was, I was an apprentice. And they give you all that little bullshits, uh, that little bull crap stuff to do. So uh, I was taught by the best. That doesn't mean I'm the best. But uh, we're going to do the best we can here. Alright, let me go get our drill. Alright, I moved over here to use this one. This, this disc is twice as fast as uh, 
the, the flat belt so uh, I'm going to uh, like I said I'm going to flatten this off first and uh, you want to keep it cool don't ever, if it turns blue you might as well just throw it out so let's see what happens That looks good to me. See what I'm dealing with here is I have a. I, mean, yeah, I don't know if you're gonna focus in on that or not, but uh, I have a chip in the back here, and hopefully when I, when we uh, cut the angle and then uh, flare it out, I'll get rid of that chip. But I don't want to go any further because I don't have I don't have much material to work with here. So, all right, I'll show you why I uh, cut that flat. Uh, let me get a magic mark. I'll be right back. All right, what I'm going to do now is just get a magic marker, Sharpie here, and uh, blacken this whole thing in here. This is uh, really an unnecessary step, but uh, it's going to help me out. What I'm going to do is this will this will help me find the center. I'm going to uh, just put a scratch mark, and I'll probably redo this after I take it off camera, but. Uh, here you go. That'll give me an idea where the center is. So uh, when we when we put the angle in there, the 118 degree angle, I know how far to go in. All right, let me go let me make a better mark on this, and then I'll come back. All right, all right. I got my mark here in the middle. That gives me an idea, and I also put a mark on the top, so I could uh, I could actually try and keep that uh, vertical. So I can see that. So All right, I'm going to try and do this. This this one goes uh, half as half as fast as the other one, so it's going to take twice as long to cut this. But that's good. And uh, I'll try to keep my hands out of your way, and then I'll probably shut you down and then do a lot more cutting. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Now what I'm going to try to do is uh, you put it on the belt on the edge. You start you start at the edge because you want to you want to cut the back off. You know you want you want that front edge to be able to to cut for you. 
So you're going to stick it on the back there and then just sort of roll it. Some guys use them, uh, them plates there to leverage it, you know, but uh, my plate is too big to do that, so I'm going to do it up here. All right, let's see what we got. I brought you over the table here to get a better look at it, and uh, uh, it looks good to me. Uh, it's, the edges look good. The, the point's not that great, but uh, this is, a, I think, a 21 64ths. I think it's, a, I don't know, whatever, one step higher than 5 sixteenths is. And uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't drill this without a pilot hole anyway, so uh, I checked it up against here and our... Uh, let me see if I can turn that... I don't know how well you guys can see that, but uh, our angle is dead nuts on, so that's good. So the only thing to do now is uh, let's take it over to the drill press and uh, we'll try it out, see how it works. All right, see you over there. All right, I got you over the drill press here. I usually don't raise the table up and down. I usually just throw uh, wood up here. It uh, saves a lot of time, and most, most of the time I use this machine, it's uh, just for crude, crude cutting holes. Now, like I say, normally something something five sixteenths of that would I would I would uh, put a pilot hole. So uh, not that I'm cheating here, but I told you to, the point on that didn't look all that great to me, and it doesn't matter because, like I say, we're, I always put a pilot hole. All right, this here looks like it's uh, just it's eighth inch steel. It's, uh, it'll do what we need it to do, just to see if uh, this thing is uh, sharp. Alright, that's a good sharp bit there, because you can see the curly cues coming off it. Alright. Chances are there's probably a factory sharp in there. Here's the same bit. No tricks here. Look at nothing up my sleeve. It's so tiny, I can't even find it. I can't even get it in a hole. Oh, uh, wait till I hear them comments. All right. Here we go. Looking good, looking good. Look at the curlies, look at the curly cues. And you know it's good, they're coming out of both sides, so that means it's pretty pretty much equal. Right, I don't have much pressure on this thing. But uh, here we go. That's all we needed to do. All right. And I call that a success. So again, that was a broken drill that I was going to throw in the garbage, or as you guys over the pond would say, throw it in the bin. But uh, thanks to uh, Alan McKinney, he uh, he wanted to see if I was sharp enough for him. Not that it was a challenge, but I'm, I think he just he was interested to see how the, how it was done. So uh, he's a good long time subscriber. 
always leaves great comments. I don't think he has much as far as content goes over on his channel, but uh, I'll leave a link anyway. So uh, thanks again, Alan. And uh, I, I'd say we I'd say this is this is good. Good. What do you say? Enough of this. All right. Enough of this.